Ah, Sage Wonder here, and welcome to Coffee Talk! Today, we are talking about interdimensional beings. Don't, don't, don't. Are they aliens? Are they demons? Are they our ancestors? And why do you have to get high on drugs to see them? Well, <clears throat> why am I talking about this for one thing? I'm talking about machine elves. I'm talking about DMT. Um, if you saw the discussion with Joe Rogan and uh, Alex Jones, uh, when Alex Jones was actually on his podcast, on his television show, his internet show, uh, the Joe Rogan Experience, that they talked for four hours and they talked about a lot of stuff, but this one topic of DMT machine elves or clockwork elves or internet interdimensional beings has got a lot of people on the internet talking about it, so I thought I'd cover it in this coffee talk. Uh, so, just for the record, I believe that demons are interdimensional beings, are aliens, are demons, are interdimensional beings, are aliens, are demons. Put them in whatever order you want. Aliens or demons, demons or aliens, it doesn't matter, it's all the same thing. Okay, so they're, they're not from here. They're entities that did not originate from an organic, earthly position. <laughs> okay? I do believe they exist. No coffee necessary for that. Um, now, are these people who claim to be interacting with interdimensional beings, um, you know, is it all in their head? Are they actually just taking a drug and talking to themselves? If you were to watch them sitting in the chair tripping, I'm sure that's exactly what it would look like. They'd look like they took some drugs and now they're talking to themselves. But according to most people who take this DMT drug, they transport into another dimension where they meet alien entities of varying different descriptions and types. And, um, you know, I want to talk a little bit about what these uh, trips have in common, a little bit about the history of, these, of this drug. Um, you know, when I was a kid, they used, to, uh, they used to call people who were, like, spaced out or, or trippy or stared off into space and, you know, blah, 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 people like that. They didn't, a lot of people didn't say they were crazy. They would call them toad lickers. And I think that that probably harkens back to a time when people would lick these toads that secrete these toxic chemicals and then have these trips. And I think it would get quite addictive to where people just wanted to space out all the time and be there all the time. <clears throat> and that's what DMT is. DMT is frog juice. It's frog sweat. Uh, there's a certain number of toads and frogs uh, in the world that secrete uh, toxics, uh, toxic chemicals from their skin. And these toxins can kill you or just make you have a weird, tripped out uh, mental trip, you know, a, a, a psychedelic trip. Uh, the people, you know, th this is not new. People have been taking these psychedelic trips for a long time. They like to call themselves psychonauts. And um, psychonauts is uh, psychedelic drugs and astronaut combined. So they feel like they're going somewhere when they take these drugs. Timothy Leary started this in the 1960s in popular culture and openly talking about uh, the use of LSD. And, you know, there's the whole thing of uh, the MK Ultra program using LSD as mind control. But uh, this DMT that people are using is this frog juice, but it's synthesized. So they found a way to chemically recreate <clears throat> the basic chemicals that are at work in the frog juice and stabilize it. So a lot of people are taking this DMT, and they're meeting these entities when they take this trip. And, you know, what I think is happening, and I've always felt this way about psychedelic drugs, that what happens is that you tear the veil between our reality and the supernatural. So, you know, the world of angels and demons, the other dimensions, if you will, um, are separated from our reality by a thin veil. And the use of psychedelic drugs can tear that veil open. The thing is, is that without, without wisdom, without knowledge, you're you're throwing yourself into an unknown world filled of filled with unknown entities and unknown peril. <clears throat> you're clearly when you have these experiences dealing your ex experiences you are dealing with entities that are far more advanced than you are, and 
um, there are some elements that are similar from one person to the next. One of the reasons they call these things machine elves is because in these DMT experiences, people are seeing entities that are biological and also somehow mechanical. So they're kind of like cyborgs, but in a really liquid sort of way, like not not like gears and, and levers, but more like uh, morphing liquid metal and electrical uh, interconnections and electrochemical uh, connections all happening like as a part of the essence of the being. Uh, Joe Rogan described one that he saw as uh, as consisting of geometric shapes. Um, another person talked about how if you stared into one of these uh, machine elves that you could see things in the machine work that you would like kind of like go into the machine work of the elf itself so um you know people have been using peyote and they have been using uh acid you know magic mushrooms um all kinds of natural toxins to try to break down the veil and pass into the uh, this other world now the problem is when people manage to do do manage to push through many times bad things happen bad things happen to them or they start listening to these elves who are at first and, and Alex Jones brought this out in that broadcast with uh, Joe Rogan that um, you know these elves uh, are nice at first you know they're there to help you they're there to make you you know to guide you they're there to bring you wisdom you know it seems like a great experience but the more times you keep going back there sooner or later eventually it starts to turn evil and they start to reveal their evilness to you and they start to demand blood according to what Alex Jones was saying and I can say that that you know in generally speaking he's right that all of these ancient Human sacrifice cults all involved psychedelics to some degree or another. Um, even as far back in Greek as in Greek times, you have the the um, uh, Oracle of Delphi, and uh, this was a woman who was supposed to channel some of these spirit beings and give you uh, give you this great information from beyond. But what a lot of people don't know is that in Delphi, in this cavern, where this person would reside, the Oracle of Delphi, that gases were being released from like underground sulfur springs. So there was like geothermic gases that were psychedelic in nature that were being, that were, so this person would go into this cavern and break through the veil to the other side. But this is what the prophets of um, Baal and Moloch would do. And, you know, that's how they knew that Moloch wanted them to sacrifice their children was because he told them to. They went into a psychedelic interaction with this interdimensional being and he said, bring me blood. And this is what Alex Jones was saying in the Joe Rogan show as well. And... But, you know, it seems to me like science has been trying to break through the veil as well. In CERN, they're trying to create some kind of space-time porthole where they can open up to another dimension. And some some believe, and I'm starting to lean towards this. I'm like, I'm needing less and less coffee to lean towards. that Because there's something going on in our world. It seems as though demons have been loosed into our culture, into our world, into our reality. That dark and evil things are are growing at a monumental rate that seems to be unprecedented unprecedented since before the time of Christ. It's been a long time since this kind of evil has run rampant in the earth, and it's just getting worse and worse. We're about to explode into some global war. I'm convinced of it because there's this demonic spirit of hate that's just fallen on the earth. Now, is it because CERN opened up a porthole? Porthole? Portal? <laughs> I say portal weird. Portal? Um... And all of these demons are pouring into our reality? I've talked about that before. Is it that the veil is getting thinner because more and more people are tearing it down and going through? You know, if you've ever been out in the woods, you can follow a trail where people have been because they walk through and it breaks the brush and the way gets easier. And each person that goes through this trail gets a little wider and more comfortable because, you know, you push the trees out of the way, the bushes out of the way, you trample the grass down, you break a limb out of your way. To go, and pretty soon, this gets to be a wide and, and, and beaten down pathway of people using it. And so is this what's happening? Is this what's happening to the veil?
Is it being torn down? Is it being broken? This veil between our world and these interdimensional beings? And now people are passing through even easier? I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but it, man, I'm telling you, the world has gone downhill, and I mean fast. Ugh. So, yeah, the Aztecs, you know, they used these hallucinogenic drugs to pass through to the other side and talk to the gods, and the gods told them to bring massive human sacrifices. One estimate is that when they, when they uh, had a festival that, that uh, anointed or, 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 you know, uh, what's it called? christened a new temple, that uh, there was like thousands, tens of thousands of human sacrifices. Basically, there were 14 a minute for like seven straight days, round the clock. 14 human sacrifices per minute, around the clock, for seven days. I don't think I want to go over to a place where those gods would tell you to do something like that. That that's that veil needs to be reinforced. It doesn't need to be. It doesn't need to be. We need to be building a wall, not opening a portal. Okay. Wow. So, I think any time that people break through. Now, there's other ways to break through besides using a, a you know some kind of of atomic portal or drugs to break it down. Uh, meditation, seeking, searching. Um, you know the Buddhist method can break down the veil as well and and I think possibly if you were gonna go that's the way to go um, that because that's the pathway that I as a Christian have 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 taken to cross because I have crossed over to the other side and been through the veil but I've gone to be with angelic beings I've had angelic visitations through the veil I've had interactions with the uh, you know with uh, the heavenly hosts through this veil. God has spoken to me through this veil. Be honest with you, I feel like I received the baptism of the Holy Spirit through this veil, through prayer and med meditation. That um, I was given power to see through the veil from time to time when uh, it's necessary. And so, you know, there are ways of, of, of going through the veil. And, you know, I saw another... Uh, a, a clip where Alex Jones in a previous discussion was talking about these clockwork elves and he was saying that if you're a good person and you break through this veil you can contact the angelic but if you're a bad person and you go through this you're going to contact the demonic the demonic is going to exercise its rights over you and so the quality of your experience has to do with the purity of your heart and I do think that that is true except when you start using drugs because if you use meditation to break through, then your heart is going to lead you to the place that your heart is connected to. So if you're connected to God and the heavenly and the angelic, that is where your meditation will lead you. That's where your prayer will lead you. But if you're, if you're dark, if you're evil, if you're self-centered, then you will be led towards the demonic because that is what your heart is connected to. But when you take this DMT, when you lick the frog... I believe it takes everyone to the same place. It's like a one-way express ticket. Even the way they describe the trip, when they take off, it's like being shot out of a cannon. <laughs> One person said he was being shot through this tube that was lined with snakeskin. Through the belly of the beast. Don't, don't, don't. If the road you're going down in your trip is lined with snakeskin, turn around and go back. You took a wrong turn. You're going to the wrong place, man. <laughs> I don't recommend taking drugs to get there, but if you find yourself through the veil, if you find yourself interacting with interdimensional beings, then my Bible taught me to test the spirits. So one thing, angels, the angelic, the good, will always point you towards God and the heavenly and the divine. Demons, evil spirits, clockwork elves, they want to point you towards them. How, well, they want to show you how awesome they are. They claim to be in control. They don't like it when you analyze their appearance. They're shapeshifters. They can change appearances, and they and take joy in doing that during these tr DMT trips. Um, demons will always glorify themselves and your own power. They'll tell you what a great person you are and what great potential you have. 
They will claim to be in control of everything. They will claim to be good teachers and benevolent and helpful and have your best interest at heart. But my Bible taught me that evil spirits will masquerade as angels of light. Don don don. Uh, so are you too wise to be deceived, especially when you're taking some drug? So, um, <laughs> one thing they'll tell you is that there are no rules, that life is what you make it, and there are no rules, no limitations, no guidelines, it's just whatever. So those are some of the earmarks, I believe, of the demonic as well. I find it interesting that Joe Rogan talked about meeting jokers. Uh, these uh, machine elves who look like jokers from a deck of cards and they were all giving him the finger They're all dancing around giving him the finger and that's that's that, that's the ring finger That's not the finger they gave him though. So they're dancing around giving him the finger and um, And he, he just thought that was some kind of you know Like they were telling him not to be so serious and I was like dude. I know what they're doing. They're mocking you They're literally dressed up like liar fools jesters you know, tricksters, um, and they're dancing around, giving you the finger, going, ha, 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 we tricked you, you think we're the good guys. <laughs> they're mocking you, Joe Rogan. I don't know why these people can't see the subtleties of these demons. They jump out to me. Aliens are demons, are interdimensional beings, are clockwork elves, they're all the same things. Uh, angels are made are, are across the veil as well and they're made from a similar material and they're a similar type but they're they come from a purity that you can see through you can see through them and you can see their purity and they don't use confusion and they don't use these flashing lights and whizzing you know geometric shapes to confuse you you know they just come to you and they speak the truth Plain and simple and clear and to the point, and they show you things relevant. That is very different than the DMT experiences. You know, they're the art. Uh, the The devil is the uh, was it the devil is the master of confusion or the lord of confusion, and you know God is the god of order and symmetry. So I think that. Um, I think that if you have discernment, you can you, you know what you're dealing with here. I do not recommend taking these DMT trips. If you're if you want to contact the angelic prayer, if you want to reach out to God, if you want to experience the Holy Spirit, then I suggest that you do it through prayer and meditation. And a lot of people are gonna be like, ah, meditation is evil. No, okay. <laughs> my Bible tells me to meditate on God. My Bible tells me to center my thinking on good things. And this is what I mean by meditation. Uh, reaching out to God through prayer and meditation will lead you to an angelic experience through the veil. But um, I don't recommend taking the DM treat. Don't be a frog licker. Don't don't lick the frog. That's just gross.